All right, let's do this round three of trying to film this video. <laughs> Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Zach, aka Crochet Me Zeddy, and I am a crochet content creator, plushy maker, ami gurumi artist, crochet all-rounder person on the internet. In today's video we are talking about market prep part two. A lot of you would have seen that I did a previous market prep video where I used AI, I used ChatGPT to help me write a to-do list on how to prepare for my market as well as used it to figure out my costs, figure out uh, how many plushies I can make in the time that I have and I have revisited that production plan and that to-do list and I'm gonna run through how far I've got and how I'm feeling and where we're up to now in preparation for the market. So the market itself is happening on November 18th and 19th at the Melbourne Showgrounds. So if you're in the area, come say hello. It is called the local makers market and I will be there from 10 to five, both days of that weekend. So come say hello. But how is it going? How do I feel about the market prep so far? I have had moments of feeling a little bit overwhelmed because I'm not only just focusing on my market prep, I'm trying to run my whole crochet pattern designing business on the side as well, as well as do my other part-time job. So there's a lot of things going on, but I don't feel too overwhelmed just yet. I think in the days leading up to the market, I'll be like, oh my God, I've got nothing prepared. I'm not ready, I can't do this. And it'll just be all those kind of thoughts, but that's also just nerves and excitement all getting mixed into one, you know? But as far as I go for how I'm feeling now, pretty good. That last market prep video I filmed almost about a month ago and in that time I've had my parents visiting, I have had so many things going on in my life. I have a, a whole new baby niece so it's been a very exciting yet very busy time the past month and I'm pretty excited to be back here now and providing these videos weekly and just coming on here to hang out with you guys. So where are we up to now in market prep? I have gone through a lot of the to-do list and I'm up to the point where I am essentially just gathering all the things to help create a setup for my market space. My boyfriend has been helping a lot in this area. He has a background in visual merchandising. So he's been able to really just kind of give out these ideas of how I should approach creating my market and one thing that we worked on together the other night was actually talking about the kind of concept that we want to pull together rather than just having like everything out on a table shelves around whatever just like putting my plushies out there he was like well maybe you should try evoke like a feeling that people get when they visit your stall so we worked together on this and we came up with the teddy bear picnic kind of theme so now i have ordered in some like gingham picnic uh pattern like table covers. I think they're actually pink. Like, I think I literally just have picnic blankets. They're in the lilac that I use for a lot of my branding. And so we're gonna be putting those on the table. I'm gonna put like a little bit of like green leaves around and maybe even get an actual picnic basket on the table as well. So I have some like plushies popping out of like that. But I really wanna evoke the feeling of people seeing these plushies and feeling back in that kind of like childlike state where they're like, oh my God, I remember like, when I was little and I used to play with my plushies outside or on a little blanket or it just creates the kind of comfort that you see when you see these plushies. So that's the concept we're going for and we're designing the market space around that. So very cool, very exciting. What I have actually prepared and ready to go right now, I have my... Uh, I have my business cards, so I got these printed out. They're looking pretty snazzy. I'm pretty happy with how they look. I do need to print a few more of those, so I should probably do that right after this video. I also have some customer care cards as well, so anyone who purchases from me will get one of these of just like telling them how to look after the plushies. Once again, I do need to print more of those because for some reason I plan to have over a hundred dolls made for this market. Is that a lot? I, I mean, I haven't seen any like plushie markets or like been to a maker's market where I've seen plushies there in this kind of capacity so I'm not really sure if like a hundred plushies is too much but we're just gonna go for it anyway but in addition to that I've also got these like brown paper bags that people can take their plushies home in I found these kind of like a wicker bamboo baskets at Kmart which is a store here in Australia and they're on clearance so I was like these would be kind of cool so I thought they'd be like a good spot to pile together similar shaped plushies these little mushy boys here 
So I thought that was a good idea. And one thing that I think is very exciting because I wanted to add a bit more of like dimension and height to the space that I am using in my market stall. I got some of those like tiered shelvings. I was talking about this in the last video, but I actually have one here so I can show you. <laughs> It's not like fully put together right now because like this whole top bit can come off. Uh, apparently I, I need to actually screw that in myself even though there's no holes for screwing it in, but whatever. I'm just gonna shovel these plushies to the side and I'm gonna restack them. <laughs> so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. Excuse me. Beep beep. Excuse me. Okay, okay, okay. And then I can put like little butterfly buddies, little dino buddies up here. Yeah, doesn't this look good? Doesn't that look neat? If I move that out of the way. So I'm quite happy with that. I could even put some smaller items on here too. Yeah, so I've got three of those like shelving units there. So I'm pretty happy with how they all look. I think that gives like a good amount of dimension like off the table. So people come over and they'll be like, what are those? I'll be like, those are my plushies. <laughs> so I've got three of those tiered stands. Um, they were so easy to build as well. Like they were all just like slotted in. All I had to do was like screw in these little standy legs, which also fold back. So that makes them like perfect to fold together and put into a car for storage. So. I'm pretty happy about that. But apart from that, the other thing I wanted to set up that I don't have yet is something like, so rather than just having two tables and putting them in like a certain shape or in a certain way to try and get those customers coming by, I decided that I wanted to do, uh, well actually I, I say I decided, my boyfriend told me to do this because he's so smart in this area, but he talked about getting like a shelving unit, almost like a pegboard and putting shelves on there. So we wanna get something where we have like a table where you can have like the basket with all the plushies in there, as well as these kind of like uh, tiered stands all around and then also getting this pegboard kind of stand that will actually be off the ground height and give another kind of dimension to the market area. So, and then on that, I want to be able to actually hang off some of my keychains as well as have some little shelves put on there so I could like stand dolls like this as well. So they're all kind of everywhere, but also kind of put together in certain groups. You have like the keychains together, you have like, these will be not this kind of arrangement but they'll be in the the ranges of the different tiers of dolls that i talked about for my pricing in my previous video so all in all i think it's pretty exciting i can't wait to see how it all turns out but i'm pretty happy with how it's coming together so far following on from that i think the next part i can really talk about is actually sorry <laughs> i got distracted i was like i need to stand these back up but aside from that like these stands and the pig boards i think we're pretty much ready to go apart from just making the rest of the plushies that I need to make. So I think by the time that the peak boards even arrive, it'll probably be too late to change my mind on anything else, but I'm pretty confident with how that concept is gonna go and how it's all gonna look. And I mean, if it's, if it doesn't shape up to be how I think it's going to be or how I hoped it's gonna be, that's fine. This is also just my first market. It's also the market's first time hosting such a large event. So I think it's a, it, it's a good, time to like kind of practice things but also try putting my best foot forward for my first time doing a market so I'm excited regardless. But in saying that with actually how many dolls have I got prepared so far I have been doing a bit of a count. I might as well just like run through that with you so as you can see here I've been making so many like variations of different plushies. I've got my little dino buddies, I've made like a little squirrel buddy, I've got some little leggy froggies, I've got my cow, my little cow pal. And you can see over here I've got my uh, next pattern that's coming out in a week or so's time, the little deer buddy. Isn't this the most like adorable thing? I'm obsessed with how this one turned out. Like sometimes I design my patterns and I'm like, oh this is good, this is good. And this one, I am so excited to release this one. With regards to what I've made so far, I have kept pretty much to plan of what I wanted to make. I have made so many of these little mushy boys. Aren't they the most adorable things ever? I have made eight of these in four different colors. These ones are ones I'm gonna attach to little key rings like this, and I would have them hanging off the pegboard as well. I've also designed my own little pocket kitty pattern. I'll probably release this sometime in the near future. These only take me about half an hour, if that, to make each. And they're so adorable. This one's like a little leopard that I made over on TikTok Live. Isn't that cute? I guess I could call it a cheetah. I don't know. It's a cat with spots. <laughs> I made a little tiger version. 
I've got like a little brown, what I'd call tabby version. Uh, what else have I got? A little black version. I've made so many of these little kitties and I think once again, just like the mushy boys, I'm gonna put little key rings on them. I've made a couple of these leggy froggies. I definitely need to make more of these. I just realized that the lighting is kind of glaring in on the camera. I can't change that. <laughs> Technology, huh? I've got a few more of these little little snail buddies and other little garden buddies to bring along with me. Yeah, I've got so much that I've made so far. In total, for actual stats, I have made only 17 of these kind of like pocket sized things. These little, this one here, the little fockers. Flockers! Oh my god, I need to get that right. These little flockers. Uh, so I've made 17 kind of like pocket makes. I have made none of what I planned from tier two, which were gonna be like baby stingrays and baby turtles and little penguins and things like that. I have made none of them. I really need to get onto that one. I have made 11 of these kind of size dolls, the little garden buddies, the little butterfly versions, uh, the bats, little cow pals. I've made 11 of those kinds of dolls. And then I have 14, <laughs> clearly my favorite ones to make is my own like larger dolls, the, the larger buddies. I have made 14 of this kind of size pattern, little buddies. So I've got quite a few of the bunny buddies I've made. Uh, I've got a few of the dino buddies made. I've made a couple of unicorns, the squirrels, kitties. I have got plenty of these buddy ones. So I think over the next month or so, I really need to pivot and start focusing on making some of the smaller makes. But to be honest, I think it's quite good of me to make those kind of longer time consuming dolls earlier on because once it gets to like the real crunch time just before the market i am going to need to really just be powering out a lot of those small ones and i think those are like those bite-sized dolls are probably the best ones to do in that crunch time rather than being there for like what like three four hours being like oh my god i could get this one done and like ending up with only like one produced item whereas in like a four hour time frame i could make eight little kitties you know Anyway, with regards to that, with what I had planned earlier on my previous video, I had planned out making 128 individual plushies from across all the different tiers. I currently have 42. So I've only got like a third of the way there and I have about three weeks. I have less than three weeks until the market. Oh god, maybe I am gonna panic a little bit. Um, so I have 42 dolls out of 128 planned. You might remember in the last video I made like a small error with the pricing, with how I was doing the calculations with AI. I mean, I say I made an issue, that was AI. AI did not work out with how I wanted it to. But anyway, I readjusted that, so I'm actually aiming for a total of a planned $6,240 worth of plushies that I could achieve if I sell out of everything that I could make but at this stage i only have with the 42 dollars that i've made i have 2576 dollars uh i was about to say up for grabs but of potential income that i could make if i sell out of everything that i bring so that's all pretty exciting i think in regards to all of that i think i just need to actually knuckle down and get on to doing things as i said i've had a really busy month now that my family's headed back and things are starting to smooth out i have done a few more exciting things over on the social medias which i'll get into shortly but everything should be now out of the way that i can focus on making these dolls and really do that final push for a really successful market so i am excited so yay but as i just mentioned those exciting things happening over on social media i have released a patreon so i have hummed and hard about doing something like this for quite some time i've been doing like over the last like month or so i have been looking into what a membership or an exclusive benefits club kind of thing would look like and how that would work for me and i decided that the best fit would be making a patreon that would benefit those who really enjoy my content as well as want that kind of reward system for choosing to do my patterns. I'm gonna link it below. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of benefits out there. I, the way I easily describe it is that there is a reward system for those who love my patterns, as well as a community bonus for those who wanna come in and hang out with such a cute and kind community. I 
already love how it's thriving so far. I only released it yesterday and there's like a good chunk of you on there just chit chatting away. So I am so appreciative and I can't even fathom how nice it's been to have that kind of response to opening up something like this. So please go check it out. You don't have to join in or anything, but I, I mean, I appreciate it. Not gonna lie. I have, I have my goals in sight and I would love to be able to be doing this full time as a full on content creator and just be making plushies and making fun videos and all that jazz. So please go check out my Patreon as well. Linked it below and a huge thank you to everyone here who are already my patrons. I just, I just can't thank you enough. It is so exciting and I think that's everything I wanted to uh, mention in this video. So I hope you enjoy this update. I will likely do another update right before the market and start vlogging how the market goes as well as like an after, after analysis of the market with costs, prices, what sold, what didn't, everything like that. So very exciting times ahead and can't wait to see you all there. If you enjoy this kind of content, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as your engagement means the world to me. And I will see you all on the next video. So thank you for hanging out. Peace. <laughs> this is the ending. <laughs> and there was like no music, but I was like, yeah, pretending like whipping like a wig around. Yeah, cool. <laughs>